Hey YouTube, welcome to this episode of The Gunman. So this video here, I'll be taking you guys through the paintwork on this custom HZ Ute. So I'm sure there'll be a few people out there that'll absolutely love this and think it's cool because it's just something different. There's probably going to be some people out there that say, what the hell have you done to that beautiful old looking HZ Ute? Um, and I won't get involved in that. I can see it's pretty cool, but it's different. Would I do it to my car? I don't know, that's not what I'm here for. I'm here to do the paintwork on it. So, we've got some blistering and bubbling paint and it's from some old body filler underneath on the roof and also the car got broken into. So you'll be able to see on these locks here, someone's grabbed a screwdriver and tried getting into the car. And um, yeah, so the owner said, you know what? You're not doing that again. I'm just gonna shave those locks right off and get a um, alarm system fitted and get keyless entry on it. So um, it turned out that he wanted to actually get the entire uh, handles shaved off too and have it keyless, like total keyless entry so that they would pop open as you press the button. But it turns out that it is actually against the law over here in WA so he wasn't actually able to do that, unfortunately for him. But that's cool. My partner did the, most of the repairs on this. I did help him on the roof there. But um, he also did the welding. He got some steel and uh, put it in from behind where those locks were. Cut them out in a couple of little squares so it was easier to cut the piece of steel into the uh, correct size rather than trying to cut a piece of steel into a circle so you haven't got any hole saws and um, then there'd probably be a larger section for you to have to bridge the weld so you just cut them into squares and welded a couple of new sections in there put the body filler in sanded it out got it all prepped up for primer work and for the most of the rest of the uh, stage I took over from there so we are uh, obviously business partners and when in business you've got to find out the things that you do better and uh, the things that the other people do better personally I hate removing and refitting and I'm not the biggest fan of repairing I actually don't mind doing body filler repair Pairs. I don't like welding. It's not that I can't do it. It's just it's not my trade. It's not my passion. It's not what I love doing. I love doing uh, even prep work. I you know masking. I love uh, mixing paint up. I love smelling paint. Haha. <laughs> no, just kidding. Um, I don't mind a little bit of a smell, but um, yeah, you don't want to get too much of it into you. It's not good news at all, especially with the two pack paints. But um, yeah, so the gun that I'm using here is the Air Gunza AZ-3 with the 1.8mm fluid tip on it. This gun actually just made it into my top 10. I think it was around uh, 7 or 8, uh, but that was only as a primer gun. It wasn't as the 1.3mm for color and clear, which I'm yet to use. I have heard that the fan is a little bit small. It's not surprising because it it is a little bit small even for primer but it it seems that it's actually not an issue um it may become an issue for uh base coat and clear coat so um there you go that's um yeah your first coat i don't like to put it on too heavy and then let it dry right out it turned out that i actually did end up getting some um shrink back some mean shrink back in this and like fry ups type thing so i just continued priming up the entire thing and then um there was actually another little spot of bubbling paint that we found so it had to go back in uh for more primer work anyway it was just um in one of these channels there there was um yeah a bit of bubbling paint so we ground it all right back put a bit more filler in it put it back in the booth primed it up and um yeah continued on with our prep work the battery kept going flat on this car and we were pushing it around for a lot of the time which is a little bit of a pain in the ass as you can see there we've got that extra bit of primer on there um i did rub through a little bit so i put a bit of 1k primer there i was using the nason 1k acrylic primer and I've got nothing but good words to say about that primer. It's compatible with the two-pack base coat, and um, yeah, you don't get any shrink back or fry ups, and that's uh, that's been put to the test of time as well. Because on my own car, most of you guys will probably remember I did my VL Commodore. Um, I had a bit of an area where I had to put some of that primer, and over a month down the track, I because I remembered where it was. Obviously, I could even remember. Uh, a bit better because I made a video on it so because I saw it a couple of extra times um, but yeah I kept checking on it and not one piece of shrink back whatsoever so yeah um, I'm confident with that uh, 1k acrylic primer anyway as you can see I've got the 
Um, prep work all done, masked up, all cleaned down, ready to start shutting up those doors and getting some paint on. You may notice that I always like to put a little bit of water down in the booth floor as well. This is just to help any of the overspray stick to the floor rather than recirculating back into the booth and turning into crap. Now this was one of the first times I ever used this brand new gun. I got it from Spray Guns Direct in the UK. They sent it out just to do a bit of a demo with it and uh, see what I thought of it. And um, yeah, I've got nothing but good words to say about it. Basically this GPI is the original GTI Pro. Um, they've re-released it, they've changed it a bit, and they've dropped the price. So um, it's a 1.4 mil fluid tip on it, which is what I'm using now. You can also get it with the 1.6 and 1.8. The 1.6 I've found really useful for acrylic. I did a bit of a acrylic demo, used it in that, and it went quite well. 1.4 I've found is a little bit uh, small for like acrylic clear. Um, whereas the 1.6 just worked out perfectly and uh, 1.8 is perfect for your two pack uh, primer, primer fillers uh, more a primer surface so you'd probably go the uh, or a sealer type thing you'd probably go the 1.4 like prior to painting um, if you're worried that you had a couple of areas that would, would go into fry back up or something and you wanted to put a bit of primer over them just like just before you started painting then that's probably what I'd do with the 1.4 but um, as you can see now, it's um, it's getting quite good results. Uh, for me, it really doesn't take that long to know if I like a gun. I mean, you know, I'll just grab it, use it for base coat, use it for clear coat. I'll just about know straight away whether or not it's a good gun or not. I was um, just doing some searches uh, on Google the other day, and I found these guys that do spray gun reviews, and they had a pretty good looking website and that, and. They had all these criteria that they go through when reviewing a gun and they're saying, oh, it's been put through all these tests, blah, 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 blah. And I'm thinking, man, you're overthinking it. You know, it's just a spray gun at the end of the day. They've been around for years. They're going to be around for a long time to come. I mean, at the end of the day, the technology has come a little bit uh, a fair way in my uh, career. But the main thing about that is the size of these air caps are a lot bigger. So, this gun here is the GPI, and the, uh, this is when they really changed to me. When they, the original GTI Pro, when they came out, spray guns changed to me. Um, I was never a big SATA fan, although some of those older SATAs were quite good. The NR2000, absolutely awesome gun. I've never used the 3000, but I hear that's a good gun, but I didn't really like the SATA Jet 4000. Um, the 5000 is an absolutely amazing gun, but if you look at the diameter of the um, air cap, they're much bigger than the older guns. Like If you look at even the FLG5 or the SGK, it's got a fairly small air cap on it, but for for the um yeah for the size of that air cap it actually has got a decent size fan on it but um yeah basically the size of the air cap um makes the size of the fan a lot bigger um and that's where it's really changed in my career anyway and this is uh, well with the GTI is not the GPI as such but it's basically the same gun anyway this is where it really changed to me and now that they've re-released it as the GPI anyone can afford it uh, so the GTI was always around the $500 mark give or take depending on which setup you get or which air cap or whatever um, but I believe the T2 was the best and the most user friendly like anyone could jump behind one of them it's conventional air caps not HVLP it's not LVLP so on a smaller compressor you might uh, want to look elsewhere for a different gun or something but um, yeah, most compressors will be able to keep up with a conventional spray gun. So for at home, it'll be perfect. Um, and yeah, like uh, a DIY guy that's just had enough of buying shitty old guns that like last, you know, a month or two or a couple of sprays, you know, I'd, I'd put you in the direction of this gun because you can see the size of that, that fan. It's, ma like, it's massive compared to the older guns, you know, um, and it pumps out a lot of fluid too. So it's a... So 1.4, so yeah, it's going to pump out a little bit more than the 1.3. But, um, you know, you can wind that fluid in if you find out you're getting a little bit too much coming out. Um, I've found, you know, two and a half to three turns out on that fluid is perfect. Um, I might turn it out a little bit more with my base coat, you know, because you, you, know, you want to get a little bit more base coat on than your clear coat. Um, yeah, full fan on this thing and 25 PSI. Uh, so they're around $300 Australian. Um, you might pay a little bit more to get it shipped in or something like that. Um, obviously in America, the American dollar is doing quite well at the moment. So you'll get it, I don't know, 230 or something like that. Not 100% sure on that. But um, yeah, it, the way I say it, like, if you can't afford a $300 spray gun to spray $2,000 worth of paint, well then there's something wrong going on, you know. Um, 
if you want to buy a starting line gun, a SLG, they're absolute garbage. Like you get three guns for like 100 or $150, I don't even know. I don't even really want to get them, uh, to be honest, because I know they're going to be crap. Like I've had a guy just asking me this morning on my comment section, he's like, oh man, I've got, you know, one of those starting line guns and, you know, the fan size just keeps changing without even touching anything. Like, so it's going from full fan to like spot without even doing anything and I'm like yeah well I'm not surprised man you bought a crap gun like you know um you probably should have watched some gunman videos and I would have uh, or asked me first I would have said man don't buy one I've had many people ask me about them um and though I have never used one I know they're garbage they're made in Taiwan I've spoken to people that do know about them they're garbage you know you're putting so much money's worth of paint on uh put it on with a half decent gun at least a half decent gun and this is more than half decent gun it's an awesome gun um and you've got the flg5 or the sgk that's not it's even cheaper than this like in america i think it's like had people say they can get them shipped to america for 130 dollars us which is cheap you know i don't think they do sell those flg5s or the gpis in the us at the moment it's weird to me uh it's a totally different market over there in the us and guns are marketed differently they do also have like stricter laws in some of the states from what i know as well with all the hvlp and the low vocs it's all to do with the environment and stuff like that so yeah um these are still awesome guns and um you can still get just as good finishes, just as um, efficient, I believe anyway, as a HVLP spray gun. Um, so if you are looking at getting them, just jump over to Spray Guns Direct. Um, yeah, they have been really good dealing with me and I'm yet to hear of anyone that has been uh, done bad by them anyway. Um, and if you have had a bad experience, let us all know. Like, um, yes, yeah, they're more than happy to hear the feedback, you know, and I'm sure that if, yeah, you do have a problem, they will deal with you quite well. But um, yeah, they've basically started sending these guns out and they're just like, man, just be honest about them. Because I said to them, I'm like, man, the last thing I want to do is just go and start selling your name and sell out just for the sake of getting a couple of free spray guns. You know, I said, I've got to keep true to my YouTube channel. But on the other hand, I've... I don't need any more spray guns. I simply don't need any more spray guns. I've got I've got enough, and you know it's not like I can't afford a new spray gun when it does come out or anything like that. But um, this should work well in both of our favors. They get their guns out there. They get a little bit of uh, promotion, you know. And yeah, I haven't haven't got anything bad to say about them. But um, I don't have to go and fork out hundreds and hundreds of dollars all the time for the newer spray guns on the market. And, you know, it gives me good new content as well. So when a new gun comes out, I'm not having to spend, well, if it's a new starter, like around $1,000 just to be able to review a gun, you know. Um, I do believe starters are way overpriced, but that new gun is absolutely amazing. Um, yeah, it's probably a bit too good for doing automotive refinishing. I'd probably say it's more of a custom paintwork gun because it, it's an absolute cannon. It just puts on nearly too much paint. Then you've got the other end of the spectrum. I don't like the Segola. Um, a viewer of mine, he just uh, he said, man, I've been watching your videos for a while and you know, uh, everyone's got the GDI Pro lights and the GDIs and the Devilvis. I thought I'd get something different in the Segola. And he goes, man, have it for a week and um, do a review on it. And I'm like, yeah, awesome. And I didn't like it, you know. It just seemed slow and it just didn't put enough paint out. Um, the way I see it, you can slow down a quick gun but it's hard to speed up a slow gun, basically, without just putting more thinners in it and then you're losing the body of your clear. So the paint I am using on this is the Concept Paints No Mix Base Coat. And um, this color here is basically like uh, some of the painters from my era and the older guys that have been around for a little bit longer will probably remember a holding color called uh, Panther Mica. So it was basically like black with a bit of um, uh, green pearl in it. It was, um, yeah, real popular back in the day, sort of uh, late 90s to early 2000s, which is around the time I got into my trade. Um, and this color is basically like that. Like if you get it out in the sun or if you get the um, color matching light onto it, it really starts popping out. I did um, try mixing it up and it was still a little bit out, but it was basically like that color, and the, you know, a couple of shades out. So I ended up actually having to mix it up by eye. And what I ended up finding is that uh, the base coat was basically the same as what I used to get with the Standox base coat and I was getting this really red flip and I was like man how did I used to fix this and it just came to me lemon yellow put a bit of that lemon yellow in it and bang it was just about perfect straight away there is uh, a few more bits of dust than I guess I would have liked in it 
but there's no runs, there's no dry spray, there's no silicon holes, so all in all, I am very definitely very happy with it. Um, use the Standox Hay Test Clear, and uh, got a nice wet finish with it. Ran it at about 20% reducer on the first coat, but then decided to go about 10 on the second coat. Just a bit thicker, so it's gonna it helped fill up some of those smaller bits of dust. So this side of the roof's actually quite nice. It's not that bad, but um, you go over this side here, and there's uh, a big area. Just this whole side is just sort of full of big lumps of dust, but nothing that won't polish out. So. As long as I can fix it with the buff, I'm happy. There was one spot on the other side where I had to um, just put a bit of thinners in the gun. Mixed with a bit of clear, it was up here. It was just a little bit dry through there. So you sprayed a bit of thinners over that and it melted it in. It also didn't create a big dry spray patch because there's thinners in it. It's just not a specific fade out thinner, which mainly because I don't have it. And I don't really want to go and spend $200 on five liters of thinners that basically you can do the same thing with your normal thinner. Color blended out nice. I checked that with my spray gun light, the Luma 3. And Pretty happy with how it all went. So yeah, a bit of a pain in the ass with all that dust in it, but hey, that's just painting. Nothing that a polish will not fix. A little bit more polishing than what I would have liked on a black car, because blacks are obviously the worst to polish. It just takes quite a long time. Um, look, you know what I put it down to? You may be sitting there thinking, oh, that's just an excuse. It's the booth, and I know it's the booth. Um, I've worked in loads of different shops before and this is probably the worst booth I've ever had to work in and I get more dust in this booth than any other booth I've worked in um, and that's just the way it's set up it's it's got like you might see up on the roof there just in the back of the screen now it's got this little section where it uh, just draws the air through from the outside of the factory there and um, it sucks down to the back end of the booth where you can see now whereas with a good spray booth it will be full downdraft so the entire roof will have those filters in it and you will have uh, grates in the floor so basically all that overspray will go directly down and it's not going to be hanging around in the booth so a lot of what that dust is it's actually it's my own paint basically and it's my own paint contaminating my own panel um, if that makes sense to you um, and you know why I'm not trying to make excuses because at the end of the day I've got nothing to prove to you guys um, you're not my boss and that's the attitude I take with this YouTube channel and I think that's actually probably made it better for you guys and I think it's why you guys show a bit more respect to me because if something goes wrong I'm not trying to hide it from you because you guys all know that this is not an easy trade and to get good quality results um, yeah you know things will go wrong and um, look at that see I had to sand the entire thing right back down to get rid of all those bits of dust so if I had have just um, sanded some of those areas well then there might have been little uh, flat spots now this doesn't mean that I've sanded all the orange peel out of it. It just means that I've sanded it down evenly. So by the time it is polished back up, there will still be a little bit of orange peel left there. Um, because the sandpaper that I did use is 1500 grit, and then I went over the 1500 grit with like 2500 and then 3500. So the 1500 grit that I hit with first, it's not uh, coarse enough to actually knock that orange peel out. So it's not like it, these couple of panels are going to be dead flat and then there's orange peel in the rest of the car. I've actually still managed to match the orange peel with the uh, end result. And when I say orange peel, I don't mean ugly ass orange peel. I mean, you can see yourself, but there is always when you're spraying like especially down the side of a car you're going to get a little bit of uh, sort of texture in your finish and i still call it orange peel like some people refer to orange peel as a really really poor paint job that's like yeah totally appalling orange peely finish in it but i still refer to 
that little bit of texture that you've got in there is like, I'll say, you know, you've got a fine orange peel or you've got a real thick orange peel, say with your European cars, you've got a very thick orange peel and with your Japanese cars, you've got a much finer orange peel and it seems like they actually don't put quite as much paint on as what they do in Europe. And then you've got your American slash Australian cars and they're just somewhere in between. They've got a nice finish. They're not overly orange peely, like they're not uh, really thick and chunky, but they're not overly dry. I mean, that's going by the ones that I've seen. Some of those Jeeps are actually pretty orange peely, whereas um, your average Ford and Holden or your Ford and GM for America, I would imagine they're fairly similar to Australian cars, and the ones that I have seen um, have been anyway. But um, yeah, they've, they've got a nice finish on them. I'd say they're better than some of the other cars on the market. Like the BMWs, I think that from factory, they're quite orange peel. They've got a very thick looking orange peel. And if it was me buying a car like that, I'd, you know, the amount of money you spend on it, you'd probably want a bit of a better finish than that. But hey, they do make awesome cars. I do have a lot of respect for the European cars, especially German cars. Hope they keep the good work up, um, and I can't see that stopping in any hurry. Um, yeah, so I'll just leave a bit of that cut, cutting stage in. I didn't leave the entire thing in, or else you would have been sitting there for easily two or three hours. It's a very painstaking process, and I absolutely hate it. But there you go, there's that one little patch, and you can see we're getting a quite nice finish on it. Um, a couple of hours later, this is where I was up to. Um, yeah, once I got it all polished up, put all the parts back on, and um, gave it a really good detail. So it turned out that this car, I had to do a full cut and polish and detail on the entire car. So the entire car ended up getting uh, cut and then polished. I used the Q cut on most of it because it wasn't too bad. Like um, it wasn't that far gone. This guy obviously does take care of his car. He takes a bit of pride in it. Um, he's got a couple of other cool cars. He seems like he's got a bit of cash, cashed up Bogan working in the mines, good on him. And um, yeah, this is his car. He loves taking it to car shows. Let us know what you guys think of it. If you think it's um, you know pretty good looking car, and I think it looks a little bit better without those locks in there. Just a, you know, it's a custom car. He can do what he wants with it. The way I say it, it's his car. Good luck to him. And um, yeah, it's got that tilt tray on it, which is definitely something unique on these. They never came out like that. They came out in the tunner and the well body, which is the tub. Um, I'm pretty sure it was a 77, this uh, this model here. So Australian HZ, and it's got like a LS3 in it or something like that. Um, yeah, I'm not the big engine man, I'm the paint man. So if you can look at that and tell me what it is. I know it's an LS engine, obviously. But um, yeah, bit of a beast. Hope you guys have enjoyed watching this video. Now you've seen this video, get out there and paint some shit. Thanks for watching, and this has been another Gunman production. Goodbye.